Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy of Zero Phase. This is Eric, and I wanted to do a quick revisit of upscaling. Um, I think in my last video I talked a little bit about it. I said I'd do a revisit of it just to, to kind of reiterate and, and bring a new video for those who uh, um, want to see something just, you know, a quick demonstration of my workflow of how I do upscaling. Okay, uh, a couple things to keep in mind when upscaling. Um, make sure your settings are set to save as PNG, not JPEG. Okay, so that means in your settings, going to saving images and grids, make sure this is set to PNG. I have it most of the time set to JPEG. Okay, save space. Most of the images I gener generate, I'm not upscaling. It allows for um, faster moving around of the images, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, but when you're upscaling, um, and you try to upscale JPEGs, you'll get an upscale, but you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up with some artifacting. You're gonna end up with some banding, uh, in, you know, in, in the gradient areas instead of a smooth gradient. And, and the reason for that being is PNG has a, a deeper color depth um, and no uh, compression artifacts. Okay, so make sure you set to PNG. Back here at text to image. Uh, we're going to set, we're going to do a portrait. You know, this is kind of the thing that people really like to test. Uh, if upscaling is working, if you're getting those, the details in the skin, the details in the lips and eyes and hair and all that other stuff. So that's what we're going to do. Um, now, right now I've got it set on a normal SDXL model. Uh, I did a preset for an SDXL turbo model. So we're just going to bring this up to... Um, uh, 30 steps there. We're going to switch this from Euler A. I want to switch it over to the DPM++ 2M SD Cross. The reason for that is the Euler A tends to be a smoother looking um, generation or render. Um, the DPM++ uh, 2M and 3M SD Cross uh, samplers tend to give a little bit more grainy. Not, I, I say grainy. What I mean is just like the intricate details. Okay, It's good for creating realistic stuff. So next thing we're going to do is we're not going to mess with high-res fix or refiner yet. Okay, um, we are doing a portrait, so I want it on a, a narrower width. Uh, but I'm going to make sure it's set here, so I don't have to worry about it later. So there we go. So we're on a four by five aspect ratio, and the config scale just needs to be a typical seven. Okay. Um, I think for this instance, I am not going to worry about a negative prompt. We're working with an SDXL model that's well trained and I almost never use negative prompts when I use this model unless I'm doing something that requires structural integrity like buildings and other things so okay uh, now I wanted some prompts I'm just gonna generate some random prompts here for photography and let's put it as uh, street let's do street photography Uh, let's just generate a couple prompts here. We don't need we don't need that many. We just need a couple to kind of get a, a range here. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and oh, you know what? No, no, sorry. We're doing portrait, so we're going to do street portrait photography. That way, it assumes we're going to have a uh, a subject in the prompt. Yeah, confident urban woman, charismatic street musician. Oh, that, that should be good. Okay, copy to clipboard. Let's grab that. We're going to use the script that says prompts from file or text box. We're going to drop those in there. And let's do, we're just going to do one each. Uh, I, I have a feeling we'll get something we'll be able to work with here right off the bat. Okay, so we got our renders here. Uh, that one's not bad. like that one. Uh, got some detail in the jacket, which is cool. Uh, we got some texturing in the shirt. You can see the threading on it. Um, background a little blurred. Let's go to the next one here. This one's not bad at all. I like this one, and and it you know it didn't turn out too bad with the hands on the on the guitar. I could actually run with that. We'll see what happens when it upscales. But I love how it's got a tear in the jacket right here. It's kind of patched looking. Uh, we're gonna have some detail on the face with facial hair. So this would be a great. I think this is gonna be a great example. We'll get the texturing on the on the uh, uh, brick wall here with the graffiti, um, and I think we might even get some stuff going on with the guitar. So let's use that one. What we're going to do is come down here. We're going to grab the seed. Now, normally you'd hit this right here. Let's see if it'll work. I don't think it will. Yeah, so when you're rendering uh, prompts from a, a list of prompts down here in the prompts from file or text box, I don't know why this function doesn't work. It doesn't pull over the seed or the description uh, or, you know, the various aspects of it like it normally would. So you have to kind of manually copy and paste it, unfortunately. 
Um, maybe I'll bring that up as a, an issue on the GitHub for uh, the web, the web uh, UI. So, and then the next thing you want to do is grab that uh, description and we're going to throw that up here. Okay, and then we can shut this off. The prompt from file or text box, we don't need that anymore. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to keep the sampling steps the same. Uh, we're going to turn on high res fix. We're going to just check this. Uh, I'm going to leave it. Let's put it up here. I want it a little. Uh, we'll see. It depends on what it does with the hands. Um, sometimes it messes with. I'm going to leave it at 5.55. 55% of the way through. Or let's see. No, the denoise. Sorry, that's a different denoise strength at 0.55, which will incur some changes, but only enough to add the detail as we do the high-risk uh, high fix. Okay. Next thing is we're refiner. We're just going to select the same um, model we're currently using, so there's not a big time uh, wait for uh, waiting for it to switch to a different model, and uh, leave everything else the same. Okay. With that seed in there, we didn't change anything else. Uh, we should get the same image, uh, but this time it's going to double the resolution on it. Okay, so we're done with that one. And one thing I forgot to mention, um, typically when I'm working with uh, faces, um, I will usually enable a detailer. The reason I didn't on this one, uh, again, is because the face did turn out really well in the initial image. Okay, uh, Angle of the eyes, the uh, pupils and iris looked fine to me. Okay. Um, hand still okay. I mean, uh, there's obviously some oddities with this, but they're okay. I think it'll pass. Uh, you can barely see the six, the standard sixth finger on AI generated people. So, uh, looks fairly normal. Okay. I like it. Looks great. So we're going to go ahead and show the full size on this. We are getting the stubble. Okay. Getting some detail on the beard. You got the creases along the forehead, uh, texturing in the hair. The jacket is definitely getting a lot more detail. We're getting some of the writing over here on whatever this patch is or uh, tear and whatnot. Uh, let's see, yeah, we're getting some great detail and especially along the edges of the cuffs, the buttons. Yeah, so, so far it's turning out good. The strings aren't too mangled. Uh, you know, AI dealing with lines tend, they tend to get some doubling. You know, kind of like right here, you see how these don't really line up. There's some extra lines there, but it's that's kind of out of focus, not too, not too worried about it. Um, yeah, the hands obviously are mangled, but I'm not focused on showing how to fix hands in this one. So what we're going to do now is take this and um, we're going to send this over to image to image. In image to image, when it gets it over here, um, moving PNGs around you know, within the interface tends to be a little slower than JPEGs, but uh, it's just because of their size. Uh, you know, another thing we wanted to look at, we're back over here for a second. Yeah, so you're even getting the concrete texture there. So that's working out really well. I like that. Sorry, I just had to look at that. Okay, so back over here. We're going to leave the model the same. Um, we're not going to worry about uh, the a negative prompt still. Uh, it's handling it well. So we're going to come down here. We're going to leave it on DPM++2 on SD Karas. Okay. We are uh, going to leave everything else here the same except for denoise strength. This one we're going to bring down to point. <sighs> Depends on how much of a change you want in each segment. So somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. You can go up to, you know, above 0.3, but what you're going to end up getting is more a, kind of a checker pattern sometimes depending on if which model you're using. But because I'm not using an in-painting model, I'm going to leave this down to point right around 0.25. I'll go as high as 0.3 with this because I've not, not seen any checkering pattern patterns with that. So just 0.25 would be great for this one. So now we want to enable control net. We're going to do pixel perfect. And then we're going to come down here to tile blur because we're going to do a tiled upscale. And then it brings up in this menu here. I want to slide this over to point or to two. Uh, probably easier if I just type that in. Now we come down to we're gonna leave, that's the only thing we need to change there. Tile blur set it to the down sampling rate to two. Okay. Come over here to script. We're gonna go down to ultimate SD upscale. This is still by far probably one of the best ways to do an upscale without um, doing what the extras tabs does tab does. Uh, you know, and just as a little explanation of that. 
I stopped using the extras tab for upscaling a long time ago. Doing it this way ruins your picture. Sorry, you're never going to get a good upscale out of this. I don't care. I, like I you know, went to using the 4X Ultra Sharp, which is one of the best upscalers out there. And the problem is it, it's like it bleeds everything, it, you know, on a small scale, it kind of smooths everything out. You know, you lose a lot of the intricate details. So because it's doing such a fast upscale render, you lose that detail. So do not use that if you want a real upscale. OK, so come back over here. Again, denoise strength 0.25, uh, control net enabled, pixel perfect, tile blur, uh, down sample rate two, come down here, make sure you enabled ultimate SD upscale. Target size type, we're gonna set that to scale from image size. We wanna just take the current image size that it's at and double it, that's all we're doing, okay? And yes, I am selecting the 4X Ultra Sharp and that's it, that's all we have to change here. That's it, so once we get those set, Come back up here, hit generate, and just sit back and watch how it goes through each section. You can It's kind of fun to watch each section. Uh, right now it's breaking the image apart. Uh, there's quite a few uh, segments that it's gonna do because we already did a, a high res fix on it. And then it goes through and just re-renders each of those sections. Uh, it's pretty cool the way it works, how it overlaps it, blends it together, that kind of thing. Just so you can see what it's doing here. Uh, basically one section at a time. It's just ensuring that it overlaps each section and it's doing a slight re-render on it. Uh, depending on which section you're looking at you'll and how much you have your denoise strength turned up, you'll see that change. Um, on my preview here, it's set to show the, what is it called? The best quality NN, I don't know what it is. So you're getting kind of a blurry look right here anyway. So we'll kind of pause this until it's done. Okay, we're done and Let's see what the result looks like here. So again, when you're just pulling up the image, this first part here, it's pretty standard. Let's go ahead and blow this up all the, all the way. We're getting a lot more texture in the concrete here. Let's go ahead and slide this over here. Okay, we have some skin texture, texture in the uh, goatee. You can see the individual hairs. We're getting uh, some, some skin, uh, I don't know what you call those, like moles and the it still has a bit of that soft look to it. Um, you could re-render this face that probably would have fixed it if I had done the A detailer. Would have added more de detail, but you get the skin creases. Okay, we're getting detail in the eyes. You get the shine, you get some eyelashes. Okay, I know I say K a lot, right? <laughs> I'll try not to. And the hair, you're getting individual hairs in there along with the texture of the dreads. The denim cap has the fraying along the side, along the edge. This is, I mean, this is, this is the only way you do upscaling. You'd lose all that. You'd lose, you know, the detail on the hairs here, the fraying on the jacket. You would um, lose a lot of this intricate detail in here, the texturing on the denim, and how the buttons go together. So uh, there's just no other way to upscale. You know, the hands. Again, you're kind of. It looks like it. Didn't, you know, you can kind of see where it might have had like a sixth finger there, but it did a pretty good job with that one. Uh, strings, not too bad. I mean, for guitar, I'm just happy the neck is uh, straight. You, know, you get Sometimes you get broken necks. And if you look at this, it you know, looks like it even, you might even get curl of the uh, the strings coming off the, the, adjust, the adjustment knobs. So let's come down here, see what else we got. Got the, those there, got texture in the concrete there, the bricks. Yeah, overall, very, very, I'm very impressed uh, with, especially with the texturing in the denim. We, we, uh, we got some good texturing on that. Now, you could actually take this. What's cool about this upscaling method is you could do it again. You want to do it again? Send it right over to the uh, um, image to image screen. And when it gets over there, you just come back down here. And probably what you want to do is just adjust the uh sorry the denoise strength just a little bit okay um so that you don't end up getting really tiny checkered patterns uh you don't want to change it a lot or you can leave it at 0.25 i think 0.25 would be would be good for this um i'm gonna bring it up to 0.3 i want to you know i don't usually do it that high on the on a second render but we're going to render that out anyway and just see what it does 
So let's let's uh, let's do that. I want to see if it really does add detail and if we get some of the checker pattern. Okay, we're finally done, and we're gonna take a look at this because I want to show you what it did. <laughs> Why you don't turn up the uh, the uh, denoise scale that much when doing uh, a second generation uh, uh, control net and ultimate. SD upscale, upscale. So we're gonna blow this up so you can see what's going on here. So we're getting some oddness here. It's trying to generate a different image. And you get you can see some of the tiling right here. I mean obviously we're getting a lot of detail, but it's not the detail we want. Okay. Yeah, you can see some of the banding or tiling there. We're losing the image integrity is really what it comes down to. Um, this is why, you know, you, gotta be, you know, if you're generating, you start seeing that, just turn the, the, the config scale or the denoise scale down, okay? Oh, there is one other uh, part of the image I wanted to show you here. Let's go all the way down right there. You see that? That's kind of what you end up getting. It's like it thinks that it doesn't have, I, I think what it is, it doesn't, the AI doesn't have enough context of the whole image. To maintain the integrity of that particular section so it's just kind of generating a whole new image even at that low of uh, denoise scale um, you know the denoise strength so when you're doing that second one going from 4k to 8k uh, you want to make sure this is turned down I mean 0.2 even below that like 0.15 to 0.2 will give you a, a really good result okay so as you saw from the first one, you get some really good results. Uh, I, this was just the second one. It was just kind of an experiment to show you where you know what happens at the point three level. So you know, on that second generation, going from four K to eight K, make sure you're turning this denoise strength down. Okay, that's it. That I mean that'll great. That'll get you some really good images. And, you know, if we go back to um, the first one we did, we can come back over here to image to image, and so not this one, but the previous one. Let's grab, pull that up here real quick. Yeah, these are from my previous video. Um, so let's pull this one up here. I think this was the first one we did. So this should be, I want to say this should be a 4K image. Where is it here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 4K. So you pull this one up and you get some really good results. You, know, you got that really great texture. And you got the fraying on the denim and everything. So, um, Beautiful upscale, and then from here, if you really wanted to add more realism, so like with the face, get rid of that kind of that softer look, what you would do is actually do some in-painting with an in-painting model, okay? And then you just start detailing stuff. It's a great way to go. Hey, I appreciate you listening. Hopefully this was quick enough for you, to under 20 minutes. Uh, if you like what I do, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, look at my other videos. I've got a lot of other videos uh, with tutorials. I do update these. You know, I did, I've done some upscaling tutorials before. Not much has changed. I wanted to do a quicker, shorter one here, uh, just showing the straight path, not really deviating to the other techniques in upscaling. Because um, honestly, as far as I've been able to do, this is the best. And until you get into like comfy UI, there's some upscaling techniques in comfy UI that are just mind, mind bending. So I'm not a comfy UI person. I got guys in my Discord that are, they love it. And they their images that they show are just pretty, pretty astounding stuff. So. Um, like the video and uh, we'll see you next time.